Hey, what's up guys? It's Alex from Fast Fenders Tips. And what's up is literally what's up today because we're talking about 10 marginal gains that are worth one what. The reason I'm talking about this is I've had a few queries into Fast Fenders Tips where people are saying, can you summarize what small marginal gains we need to think about? We've kind of done it in the past, but we haven't done a roundup for a while. So what we're going to do, guys, is get into the 10 marginal gains that are worth around about one watt. Like not much more, not more than 1.5 watts and not much less. Let's say not less than 0.7 watts. OK, one watt is an arbitrary figure. Let me put out my caveat, my hesitation, my excuses right now and say, if you're talking about aero gains, obviously, if you're going faster, then the savings might well be more than one watt because they will scale up. However, if you're going really slow and you're talking about aero gains, then the savings will be less than one watt. But the funny thing is they will still add up to approximately the same time saving due to the difference of time on the course because a slower rider is out there for a long time. OK, some of you will be saying, well, come on, guys, what's one watt? One watt is tiny, right? And this depends on your perspective. If you're not riding for time, if you're not in an event, if you're not going against the clock, then saving one watt but sacrificing something else, whether it's money, comfort, or your own time fiddling around with the bike, yeah, it's not going to actually be good for you. I admit that. But on the other hand, if you are racing and every single second counts, then surely one watt may make a difference. And the marginal gains doctrine, if you buy into that, is that these will all stack up. But the bottom line here is that one watt is meaningful for a lot of people. We've done a survey here, 500 of you answered, and thanks for that. Out of 500, 63% said one watt is actually pretty meaningless for them, and that's cool. I'm not saying that you guys, 60% of you, should be concerned about one watt, that's fine. It is tiny. But that means that 37% of you said that one watt is meaningful and you're prepared to pay for it when tinkering with your bike. And here's the formula for that. We can convert this into a formula. But very roughly, most of you prepared to pay 10 to 20 dollars, bucks or euros for that one watt of gain. And ironically, we know others are prepared to pay 150 or more because that's the ceramic speed model. Their model of gains is so tiny that they will promise you, in terms of, let's say, bottom bracket bearings, a gain of around about 0.1 watt for around about 100 or 200 pounds, euros or dollars, meaning the cost per watt ends up at one to two thousand dollars per watt. And they still sell these things, guys. Come on, what's going on there? Okay, let me not get on the ceramic speed high horse again. Let me think about it like this. Take a race. Here's the results from the Men's Elite UCI World Championship time trial results. 2018 version. 2019 is coming up soon in Yorkshire, by the way. 52.2 kilometer course ending in about an hour, an hour of racing. The second place rider, Victor Campanertz, was separated from Tom de Moulin by only half a second after an hour and four minutes or so. And that would mean, in all reality, a difference of maybe a tenth of a watt going around that course. That is unbelievable, guys. So when we say one watt would be meaningless, it depends on who you are and what you're going for. For some, it's meaningful and worth paying for. For others, it's meaningless and pretty much a waste of time. But look, for fun now, guys, let's get into this list of 10 one watt watt savings that you can make. Here goes, guys. Okay guys, in at number 10, I'm gonna do skewer aero. We looked at skewer aero in this video in 2017. And actually, I did make this video a reality for me because I changed my axles on the Focus's Alco Max, which were the through axles provided by Focus. Nothing really wrong with them, but very bulky to these really nice axles, which are concealed and lockable. So they have a security function as well. But we worked out, and others have done it as well, that the watt saving from your front and rear axles changing to an aero ends is basically one watt. So the skewer aero is in at number 10, guys. In at number nine, I'm gonna talk about drivetrain friction. And in particular, I'm gonna refer you to this video that we did ooh, way back 
way back when, it was 2016, November 2016, when we put up how to save 30 watts of losses from your bike chain. Now, for sure, we made some errors in that, in the sense we didn't scale it for the power of the rider. We didn't consider every possible loss and gain. But I will say this, a ballpark figure of one watt is about what you get from not using a brand new chain, but running in your chain for about, hmm, let's say 50 to 100 kilometers. So actually the chain wears nicely against the cassette and also the chain rings and that will save you about one watt compared to stock brand new. For most people, a brand new chain is a massive step up because they're changing from an old, dirty, worn, rusty chain. But if you're really cutting edge, you can actually gain something by wearing in your chain. Okay, in at number eight, guys, I'm going to talk about aero seat posts. Yeah, it's a tiny part of your bike and you can upgrade it even if you've got a stock around seat post, as you know, this aftermarket aero ones. But to make it truly, truly competent, truly maximize those gains, you've really got to have a seat post that's designed with an aero seat tube so that the two are maximized in their profile. And actually, Eastern were one of the few to look at aero testing with and without the seat tube and with and without the seat post and with and without the wheels, you know, various combinations in here. Check this report out on Aero Sports Research if you want to read all about it. But I will tell you that a take home message is that for most people, the gain you get from upgrading to an aero seat post, a pretty nice one, is around about one watt. Okay guys, as you probably know, a lot of bikes have gone to disc brakes now. It's one of the biggest trends in cycling. But a lot of you are still using conventional rim brakes. And did you know there is quite a saving to be made from the shape of the rim brake? I'm talking about the shape of the front brake caliper. This has actually been tested. You can read about it here on aerosports.com. They looked at the Vision Trimax Aero and the Tri-Rig Omega X brakes. And as a ballpark figure, upgrading your brakes to more aero design at the front saves you about one watt. But actually, in their test, they found quite a bit more, around about two, three or four watts. It's worth reading up on that for those of you that want to realize a gain from your front brake caliper. All right, next on my list, we're at number six. And so we're talking about cable drag. We featured this quite recently in January 2019 when we looked at the benefits of tidying up your cables. The reason we did this is a lot of manufacturers have gone to fully integrated designs these days, haven't they? Fully integrated designs, I'm talking about the bar, the stem, the cables, the brake cables, the shifters, you know, especially with wireless, these integrated bars enable you to conceal all of the cables and that adds up to quite a considerable gain. But actually, a reductionist approach enables us to dissect the effect of the cables alone and we worked out from first principles that you get a saving of one watt per and um, there 10 centimeters of cable so per 10 centimeters of single exposed half centimeter cable will cause you a drag of about one watt and that's worth thinking about because a lot of you have got a lot more cable dragging outside of the front of your bike as you're trying to go along Okay, the next one I'm talking about is I'm going to revisit tire shape. Now, I actually put this into a video on tire pressure, which we released in December 2016. How to save 74 watts of losses from your tires. So just looking at the smallest of all those gains, do you remember that one of the gains in there was about the shape of the tire? It sounds a little bit weird. But basically going head on into the wind at zero yaw, it's been calculated that you save about one watt of drag just from the shape of the tire, whether it's like worn or not worn. When it's worn, it warns to like a flat panel on top, like a flat edge because of the wearing off of the rubber. And that actually leads to a loss. It's very difficult to quantify, but others have done it and said it's about one watt. So I'm gonna give you a call out that it's about one watt for a new tire over a worn tire, which is otherwise at the same pressure and the same size tire on the same rim. Wow, weird, eh? Okay, the next one I'm gonna get to is one of the most popular ones. I featured this in a video earlier this year. In fact, I've done two. I've done, is the wide tire hypothesis really true? We've also done how to calculate your tire size and also your tire pressure from a variety of surface conditions. But what this reduces down to is these hysteresis losses versus these impedance losses 
high, you can go too high a pressure easily, too high a pressure in bad conditions. So I'll tell you now, if you wanna look at a back of an envelope calculation, I can tell you now, if you go 30 PSI too high or 50 PSI too low, then you lose out on about 0 .001, 001 of rolling resistance, that's CRRR. And that adds up in the real world to roughly 10 watts. So then I can tell you today that by going 3 PSI too high or 5 PSI too low must mean that your losses are around 1 watt, right? Hmm. All right, I'm up to number three now. And my third tip in my one watt countdown is actually the aero spokes. So I'm sure you knew, didn't you, that if you upgrade the spoke wheel to aero spokes, i.e. flat spokes, which have a narrow profile in the wind, or even better, not purely flat, but an aerodynamic teardrop profile, then you actually save a certain amount of watts. And it's been calculated that, you know, it's around about one to two watts. So actually this review and test on NovemberBicycles.com says it's around 1.5 watts, depending on your speed. So around 25 miles per hour, 40 kph, then you're getting about a one watt advantage. You would actually be more at higher speeds, two watts advantage at 30 miles an hour. So what I can tell you then is that attending to your bike spokes will save you about one watt. I think actually more for a lot of riders. And if you want a freebie here, I'll toss you in a freebie right now and say that if you're looking at wheel design, if you get rid of the external nipples on a bike wheel design, even aero wheels, you'll save about one watt in rotational drag. And yeah, that has been tested by Swiss side and the link is here guys. Now one area that I've seen discussed a fair amount, but never that well implemented in terms of road bikes anyway, sometimes in TT, are your aero cranks. Now it turns out that people who have tested this, like Josh Portner, say that a good set of aero cranks are worth a lot more than a watt, it's worth maybe five watts. So I'm not gonna put aero cranks per se into my list, but what I am gonna add, believe it or not, is just the design of the crank arms themselves. Because you can have a stubby square crank arm, I actually like this one by Flow Cycling, or you can have a nice one with rounded edges or even one integrated, like aero integrated, like this Bora Ultra one into the cranks themselves. And this will, in my opinion, save you about one watt. So yes, just the crank arms attending to those will save you about one watt. And my last tip guys, also from the guys at Swiss side, but features on bike radar and also others is about aero bars and whether to wrap them in tape. Now it turns out you don't have to have just aero bars to realize the gains from not over wrapping your bars with chunky bar tape. And of course, if you wanna go for comfort and get rid of this saving, I wouldn't blame you because comfort can really ruin your race more than one watt can. But for the record, if you stop wrapping your bars about halfway into the bars, rather than at the lever, just beyond the lever, you'll save about 0.7 of a watt, i.e. don't wrap your bars too far. So if you wrap your bars way over halfway and go right to the stem, so you wrap the whole of the top bars, it turns out you lose about 1.4, i.e. 1.7 for halfway and 0.7 for the rest of the way, 1.4 watts in total. Who knew, guys? Who knew? Okay, guys, that was my list of my 10 1 watt savings, but here's my question for you. How many of those have you used? How many of those can you stack together? And how many one watt savings do you think we've forgotten that you'd like to suggest? All right, guys, I hope that was fun. And if you want more from me, give a like or share to this video, because if you like it or share it, I'm more likely to make 10 more marginal savings that are worth one watt that you can make. All right, guys, check out our social media, check out our Patreon site, Check out our marginal gains calculator and please follow us on our Strava Club. Links below. Until next time, guys, have a safe ride out there.